Hey, what's going on? Thanks for checking out the video. So this is about the three deadly sins that these customers do to us drivers on a, on a daily basis. It happens to me, I do about, now I'm doing a $10,000 challenge, so I do about 16 deliveries to 18 a day, okay? And at least five of these deliveries, the same routine with these, these customers. They're just, it's a lack of respect for drivers, you know, consideration, uh, compassion, truth, and even. And I'm gonna tell you about the compassion in a minute. But here's the thing. If you don't put your house numbers on your house, you're just an idiot. Because why wouldn't you have the house numbers on your house if you're getting deliveries? I can see if you're not getting deliveries, then yeah, go go for it. Don't put your, your house number. But if you're getting deliveries, put your freaking house number on your house. It costs freaking three dollars for three numbers. Go get them from Home Depot and, and do us a favor, okay? And then you have the people that don't put their porch light on when they know a delivery coming, especially at nighttime. I'm talking about like late night, like 12, one o'clock, put your freaking porch light on. It's dangerous for me being in this state, which I'm gonna get in, in this, I'll go in on the second, the situation I have because of not having um, the right address uh, and location. I almost got, I wanna say shot, but yeah, it was bad. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But you guys expect us to show up to your house at 11, 12 o'clock at night. You don't want to put your, your porch light on to just give us a heads up, this is the right house. Then the last one, the worst of them all, is the gate code. You guys are just playing around with our time. Like you know that it takes two, three minutes to go, we gotta go on the app, we gotta call you, you don't answer the first time, so then the second time you finally answer. Or we gotta text you, wait for you to text back to get in your gate. And then if you do the whole, like some people do, like oh, I want random people to have my gate code, dude, well don't get delivery uh, delivered in your gate or in your community. Wait outside the gate to get your food, that's simple. But I don't feel bad for you. I don't feel your uh, sympathy for you not wanting random people to have your gate code. Don't order delivery. It's that simple. But yeah, you do the gate code, and then we got a call DoorDash, and they tell us to leave the food outside your gate or at a random place. They do that to try to get a free meal, but I enjoy that free meal because I just take the food. I don't even, I just, I literally don't even leave it. I just say, um, I just put a picture of the gate with no food there and I take it and if they call and say oh no food was there so be it because I tell the door to ask um, um, customer service I brought it back to the restaurant and the restaurant technically a restaurant never takes the food back because it's technically illegal most places health um, violation take food back so I just tell door to ask I took the food back but I took a picture of me showing up to their um, address and I just eat the food I smash that food because I'm not gonna leave food outside of the gate that bugs are gonna get into, and the customers are gonna throw it away more than likely. Or if they're trying to scam me, but right, they're waiting behind the closest building to the gate, and they're gonna run and grab the food. No, I'm gonna eat your food because you want to be a scammer. And then thirdly, uh, third situation is you're wasting my time because you literally wasted five to ten minutes of my time having to call DoorDash or get into a chat and deal with all that for no reason when all you had to do was bring yourself to your gate or give me the gate code. That's just the worst. Now let me tell you the story, the reason why I don't play around with delivering food, especially here in North Carolina, after 10 o'clock without the person answering, if they don't have numbers on their house, the porch light on, I don't play with you. And I enjoy eating you guys' food. And this video isn't about eating people's food. Um, I promise you it's not that, but it's about rude customers that you gotta kinda, it's like bully payback, okay? Uh, you gotta make them pay. Um, so I had an Uber, this is like me being in North Carolina. I've, I, I was here for like three months at the time. This was like a year and a half ago. Okay, I was here for like three months. So it starts getting dark earlier. So I had a delivery at like, or a pickup at 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Um, the guys were going to beat it. I'm actually going to, um, what you call that, Hooters. They were going to Hooters. So some Hispanic guys. So my GPS, this is the middle of nowhere out in North Carolina. People know that you have the hillbillies that live in, and you have black and white hillbillies. They live in the middle of nowhere. And people usually don't come into their like area because their area, when you pull in to these like middle of nowhere, this is out like towards Leland, like past Leland, people know North Carolina. So you pull into their communities, like they have dirt roads, okay? Dirt roads and the houses are spread like maybe like 500 to 600 feet apart, okay? Um, apart from each other. And then you have like these dirt yards. They usually have uh, the old tractor in the front yard or like old pickup truck with no tires, you know, sitting on rims. 
They don't have like a swing set that's sideways. Like just nasty, okay? So you pull in, there's a bunch of potholes and bumps you gotta go through. So the Hispanic, you know, guys, and, I, and the reason why I'm saying Hispanic is they you know, asked this story in a second here. So I pull in my GPS because my phone signal completely lost because these people knew that they have no signal out here in the middle of nowhere. So lost signal. I pull all the way in and I probably, it probably took me two minutes to get all the way to the back. Now the people that I was trying to pick up, the correct address was on the other side of the, um, the complex, whatever you want to call it. Not complex, but like cul-de-sac, whatever you want to call it. They're on the other side on this road. But because GPS was messing up, it brought me to a house that was in like this middle of nowhere place. And it was like four houses all separated. So I pulled all the way in and the house that it said these people were at was in the corner. The real house was on the other side of the woods behind the house. So I pull up and I, I'm, 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 I flash my lights because I couldn't call the people and I couldn't turn the, the app that I was that I arrived. I didn't want to beat the horn because that would be rude. So a guy comes out with a shotgun and his wife crunching like on his back, like like scared. So, and the guy was scared at all. He came out like, who the F are you? And what are you doing on my property? I'm like, dude, dude, I'm just an Uber driver. Like I'm Uber driver picking up your son or somebody because they requested a ride. He's like, nobody requested a ride here. Get the hell out of here, get the hell out of here. I'm like, all right, you got it, you got it. And I literally flew out of there like with my head dumped down because I'm thinking he might shoot at my window or something, whatever, because this dude was literally out with the gun like this with his wife, you know, holding him. I'm like, no more. That was the first experience that I've had with somebody like feeling threatened to the point of pulling a shotgun out, okay? Crazy. And then after talking, okay, so let me get back to the story here. So that happens, so I pull out to the main road and I'm terrified, I'm shook. But at the same time, I'm about my money. So it was a $10 surge and I already drove 10 miles to pick the people up because I was already out in the middle of nowhere in Leland and I drove out 10 miles from there. And then it was, I, I saw on the, you know, the app that they were going all the way back to Wilmington, which was, would have been a 20 minute, you know, 20 minute um, ride. So I had to do this ride because it was freaking $35. So <laughs> 30, $35 pay. So I called the people like, dude, like what the heck? Like I show up to the house and some guy with a shotgun pulled, he pulls out a shotgun and came at me. Like, why wouldn't you guys like call me or tell me whatever? And I'm like, my signal was lost. You could have called me when you saw that I came close to your house and I pulled to the wrong house. I'm like freaking out on the guy, like telling him like, dude, you know that drivers deal with this. So why wouldn't you have enough consideration to call and tell me in advance? And then he's like, uh, I don't speak, uh, I don't speak, I don't speak clear English or whatever, however he said it. And I'm like, uh, look, my bad, man. I'm like, I'm trying to find your house. And then he said, oh, okay, okay, okay. Then he gave me his address because the Uber app, for some reason, the Uber app, when he requests, he does it to whatever location he's at. Whatever um, Uber puts in, it's usually the address across, like on the other side of the woods because of the GPS issue. But he gave me his rural address, which took me right to his house. Okay, so I get to his house, he gets in, and we're using Google Translate, because I'm shaking lightweight, but I'm still gonna do my job because of the fact I, I need the money. So I'm shaking lightweight, and I'm texting, I'm like, dude, you gotta put your address in. You put, um, you estimate it by putting that, um, putting that pin where you, where you thought you, you know, for Uber to think that you're at this location. It took me to a guy that walked out with a shotgun. And then the guy's like, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry. Like, we're sorry, buddy, didn't mean to do this. And you could tell, he's like, we just moved here from, I forgot where it was at, I'm not gonna be racist, personally racist and say Mexico or whatever, but it was it was like Honduras. It was some some place, it wasn't Mexico, but it was some place away that they just moved to Wilmington or to this place in Leland. And he's like, we apologize, you know, sorry, whatever. And they felt bad because that happened. But I'm like, this, he said that this happens to all his drivers. I'm like, dude, you gotta let us know in advance. Don't wait until we get to that house or to the wrong house and then tell us. And then he understood. And then at that point, I stopped doing pickups or drop-offs, I mean, not drop-offs, but pickups um, and deliveries to addresses after 10 o'clock out here in North Carolina because it's backwards. These people here, you literally have rednecks like you see on TV out here just rude and ignorant, you know? For that guy to come out, I get you get it, you're trying to protect your home, but you gotta kinda know when you see a um, 
a car with the Uber tag on it, that that's an Uber driver, okay, in 2022. But these people don't know. They don't realize that because they live in the middle of nowhere. They don't have like, um, they don't they don't really, they're not in tune with uh, the culture. They don't know really what Uber is now. They don't realize Uber's big to where we show up to houses. And, and I'm pretty sure, once again, he's gotten other drivers that have done this, but he's so protective of his house and his property that he doesn't play no games. Anybody pulls up at this man's house at 11 o'clock, he does not play. So now, whenever I go, actually, I don't even go out to Leland no more, really. When I was doing um, pickups, I wouldn't even go out there because of that situation had me shook. But when I'm doing drop-offs, if you don't have your porch light on at, after 10 o'clock, and you don't answer the phone, and you don't have your numbers on your house, then I'm gonna wait that five minutes, I'm gonna contact DoorDash, actually I contact DoorDash right away, and then after that five minute mark, I'm taking your food and I'm eating it, and I'm gonna enjoy it because you're putting my life in danger. And I've done deliveries, once again, I tried to go above and beyond in Wilmington and do them anyway, and I never had anybody pull out a gun, but I've had a woman open the door like, why are you here? Like, what are you doing? Like, you need something? And she was bold, she had no gun or nothing. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm dropping off food. And she's like, this is the wrong address. And sure enough, the person put the old address and they moved to a different different um, part of the town and they put their old address in on an accident. So no big deal. But yeah, you customers, um, this whole video is about customers not realizing and not considering the fact that we can't be showing up to random houses like we're police and, and people are gonna respect us enough to not try to shoot us or even call the cops on us thinking that we're robbing and breaking into their house because how random would it be for you to walk downstairs and you see a random guy or how crazy would it be you walk downstairs you see a random guy taking a picture you see that flash go off in front of your house like i would freaking call the cops immediately i would take a picture of the guy's license plate you know and these people they don't consider that you know they just think i just want my food and i want it now but I'm gonna go take a shower while waiting for my food. No one the delivery driver's on his way. I'm gonna go take a shower, and now I can't hear the phone ring, because that's the biggest excuse to these people. They usually say, oh, I was in the shower, I'm sorry, or hey, I was in the basement, I didn't have a signal. Like, dude, you know food is coming, and you know you're freaking a rude um, uh, individual, and you don't put your porch light on, like it's gonna burn that much electric, or you're too lazy to change your light bulb, so you have a light on, so the delivery driver can know. And this is a 20, uh, 2022 issue, because, you know, back in the day when this these apps first started, like in 2015 when I was doing some um, DoorDash, you didn't have these issues. Or when I was doing the um, pickups, people put their porch light on. People made sure to have numbers on their house. But now it's like these entitled people, they want to act like, you know, their information is going to be stolen or something because they refuse. They don't want people showing up to their house and they don't put numbers on their houses nowadays, which is stupid. We always had to have house, uh, numbers on our houses or mailbox. Now. They will have like the, the the number, and they don't put a light above it, or they don't have reflective tape, you know, so we can see. They'll just freaking assume that we're like we got super night vision and we can see their house numbers. And I'm like, dude, like come on now, like like be considerate. But that's the video. Sorry, I went on that rant. It was just um, the last delivery I had. Of course, they didn't have um, numbers on their house, and it frustrated me. And I'm like, you know what, if one day I can get like a rapper that sees one of our videos ranting about house numbers um, or going in with a rap about idiot customers who don't put house numbers on their houses because you're an idiot if you don't put a house number on your house and you're ordering delivery or not putting a light on or gate code when you come in. Hopefully one of you drivers who rap can come up with a song or pop or whatever, uh, rock, doesn't matter. Just come up with a song that catches to get these customers to understand to have some consideration for us. Stop wasting our time. But that's the video, that's all I got for now, I'm out, peace.